All right, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our worship service. Um, let me start with prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we thank you so much uh, for this uh, time of worship, a time of prayer, a time of coming together um, to really be with you and um, to worship with you and to really um, celebrate um, your victorious um, victory over sin and death, Lord. Uh, as we gather here today, let us um, always be reminded of um, your true sacrificial love for us um, as sinners. And even though we did not deserve um, such uh, uh, grace, uh, we just um, pray that we uh, repent of our sins and really go to you, Lord. And um, especially during this time, um, um, help America come back um, to the gospel, Lord, and um, uh, really just uh, fix our hearts to you, um, and uh, really just be with our service today, Lord, and just name I pray, amen. Don't want to stand here and shout your praise, don't walk away and forget your name, but stand for you and this all.
closer, close to your heart. May I be a pure reflection of all you are. Love that is patient, love that is kind. Thank you for uh, Jesus who died for our sins. Uh, Father, thank you that we can uh, gather here together uh, to listen to your words and to uh, worship you at this time. Father, thank you that um, you've blessed us and protected us uh, during these um, trying uh, times. Uh, help us um, uh, focus on you. Help us uh, spend uh, this moment to uh, uh, worship you. 
help us stay focused on uh, the message and not be distracted by the many things going on in this world. And uh, please uh, bless your messenger today, and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. You know, welcome ag once again to our worship service. Um, and before we begin, we have a, uh, before we move forward, we're going to have a couple of announcements. Um, so first, first announcement, uh, we've decided on the UBF Bible Conference and it's going to be an online conference. Uh, the men's conference will be August 28th and 29th. And the women's conference would be September 4th and 5th. So that's all the information we have so far. Uh, but please pray for this conference. And uh, also please pray for next week's messenger, William Larson. And now we're going to have a prayer from Ellie, Kim, uh, Ellie Lim. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together today. While it's hard to be together physically, we pray that you will help us enjoy these next few hours together. Last week's message, we learned that although Jesus could not could have defended himself, he didn't. Instead, Jesus revealed his true identity as the promised Messiah. More importantly, Jesus prayed earnestly to his Father before he got crucified, which emphasizes the significance of prayer. May the Lord help us to find our identity as well as importance of prayer. Our hearts are filled with chaos and confusion during the pandemic, but help us to get rid of fear and confusion from our hearts and fill it with peace and contentment. We really need strength and peace that only you can give, Lord. May God forgive our sins and heal America. And at this time, we want to pray for protection for medical professionals, healthcare workers who are working in the front line. Please give them the strength to fight the virus daily. Uh, we want to pray for our co-workers around the world who cannot maintain their basic life. Um, some of our co-workers are struggling. Please help them to keep their feet and keep on praying earnestly for your mercy and glory, Lord. Um, uh, we want to ask for your guidance for to prepare ourselves to serve campus students powerfully during that, during and after pandemic. Please give us wisdom and heart to continue to serve the children. Um, this time, we want to give you thanks for helping us to prepare JBF and HBF conference as well as UBF conference crea creatively with your wisdom and blessing. The conference was filled with joy, joyful fellowship, and followed. Uh, powerful words of God. We pray that uh, we pray that you continue to bless our ministry to guide these uh, children to know you better. Uh, we want to pray for each family's spiritual time at home so that we may build a powerful spiritual house churches among us. Please bless each and every household that they may continue to grow to share the love you poured out on us to each other. Lastly, we want to pray for Pastor John's message today. May God bless him and let us receive one word from you personally through the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. May God help us to worship sincere, uh, with sincere heart and faith and greet things that our worship may become pleasing aroma to you and in your name. Um, thank you for today and in your name we pray. Amen. And now we'll have Bible reading uh, from Mark 14, 66 through 72. Uh, the passage, Peter disowns Jesus. 
verse 66. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out, of the, out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near Peter uh, said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. And now we'll have the message from Pastor John. Good morning. Good morning. The title for today's message is Peter Remember the Word. Key verse comes from verse 72. I'll read it. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus has spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for blessing us to have a worship service together. Father, we pray that your name may be glorified through our worship service and you may speak to us very personally. I thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday, I found from one of our co-workers that... <coughs> Some of us can teach today's passage to our Bible students in this way. Well, Peter failed. We all fail. We live by the grace of God. When I heard it, there is something is missing, although there is some truth in it, and there is something wrong in it too. When I apply it to our own children for school study, the error becomes more clear, clearer. When our children fail in school and bring poor report card, no parents will say to them, we do not, we do not say to them, well, we all fail, we live by the grace of God. Then our Bible students and our children may feel free from stress, but it is not sound teaching. What surprised me more was 
I was, without realizing it, acting and living in that way. When I make a spiritual failure, I think, well, Peter failed, we all fail, we live by the grace of God. I did not know something is so wrong, something we are missing so much, until I heard from someone. So today, we would like to know how we have to see our failure from God's point of view. My message does not have division today. <laughs> Verses 60 through 68, I'll read. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the seven girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you are talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. While Peter was below in the courtyard, if you look at the Mark's Gospel, today's event is in between Jesus' trial before Sanhedrin, which was last Sunday message, and Jesus' trial before Pilot, which is next Sunday message. And P Peter, in a way, was tried while Jesus was tried before Sanhedrin. Verse 66, while Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the seven girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. She did not want to make a mistake. She did not want to accuse someone falsely. So she looked closely at Peter. And she said to Peter, one to one basis, you also were with a Nazarene Jesus. Just one to one conversation. For 68, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you are talking about. So he played it dumb. He said, I don't know and understand what you are talking about. He said, and went out into the entryway. Well, why did he go out into the entryway? Because Peter felt threatened and he wanted to save himself more in case he would be arrested. So he went out into the entryway to run away from the scene. Verses 69, 70 read, when the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. The same girl according to Mark's gospel so Peter there, and this time she did not say to Peter one-to-one -one basis. She said to those standing around Peter. So it was more dangerous for Peter. And she said those, to those standing around, this fellow is one of them. Peter felt threatened, and again he denied it. Again, he had to deny it to many people, not just one servant girl this time. Verses 70b and 71 read, After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you are talking about. After a little while, this after a little while, could it be one hour, or could it be one hour at least? So Peter had a time, according to Mark's gospel, about one hour between his first and second denial and third denial. 
Now this time accusation came from those standing near. They said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. According to Matthew Gospel, they found Peter was a Galilean because of his accent. So Peter must have spoken to them, and they realized he was a Galilean. Galilean must have a strong accent, or at least accent so clear that they could pinpoint they were Galilean not the Jerusalem Jews. Then, verse 71, Peter began to call down curses. Curses on whom? Probably call down curses on him in a sense that what I'm saying is not true. God's curse be maybe upon me. That kind of idea. And he swore to them, he made an oath. He made an oath in the name of God? We don't know, but he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. So far, Peter denied twice, I don't know what you're talking about, to the servant girl and to those surrounding them. But this time, Peter specifically mentioned Jesus Christ. I don't know this man you're talking about. Jesus taught his disciples near his trial time. Whoever wants to follow me must deny himself and take up his cross follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it Whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Jesus also said, If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory. Peter specifically denied Jesus and he was ashamed of Jesus. So it was not just a simple denial. Verse 72, immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Peter's confidence in his own strength broke down at the time. The crowing of the rooster reminded Peter of Jesus' word, before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. Of course, Jesus did not say these words to discourage Peter, but to encourage him to prepare himself for the coming temptation. But he did not listen to Jesus' word. He did not even remember the word Jesus has spoken to him, even after he denied Jesus twice. According to Mark's Gospel, even when rooster crowed the first time, he didn't remember. Only after he denied Jesus three times, he remembered the word Jesus has spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. According to other gospels, he wept bitterly. He so broke down because of his failure. Peter was not just one of 12 disciples. 12 disciples are special people, you know. But especially among 12, Peter was the special of the special. He confessed Jesus is the Christ. 
Jesus promised he would build his church on the confession of Peter. Peter was regarded the leader of the twelve, and Jesus specially treated him. Special attention was given to Peter. But he disowned Jesus not only one time, but three times. All because he did not remember the word Jesus had spoken to him. So he was so hurt, he broke down and wept bitterly. Once in a while, we may experience such a terrible failure in our lives. Why did Peter fail so much? In the introduction, I told you, you want to think about how we have to see our failure. First, they think about why did Peter fail so much? Of course he failed because he did not remember the word Jesus has spoken to him and prepared a battle through prayer. Jesus told him, watch and pray so that you may not fall into temptation. In order to win the victory of any battles, you need to know the cost involved to win the battle. How much your enemy is strong, how much strength you have, and you need to compare it, and in order to win the battle, you have to prepare well enough to overwhelm your enemies. But Peter didn't do it. More specifically, why did Peter fail? When I was thinking about why did Peter fail, the one word of God, one of my close co-workers mentioned. I remembered one word of God, my close co-worker mentioned. Important matter, Whoever wants to save his life, he lose it. And whoever loses his life for me, for Jesus, and the gospel will save it. It's a matter of saving life or sacrificing life. What is saving life and sacrificing involved? It involves the suffering. What did Peter deny Jesus? Because he did not want to suffer. He did not want to be arrested. He did not want to suffer together with Jesus. So he disowned Jesus three times. What happened to Peter after that? Did Peter see his failure? Well, Everyone fail. We all live by the grace of God. Is that what Peter thought? I don't think so. Peter grew. We are going to study first and second Peter after we finish the book of Mark. And these two books clearly shows what happened to Peter? What happened to Peter after his failure? Suffering was the main cause of his failure. And Peter grew up, and the grace of God helped him to be strong in the sufferings. And not only he was able to be able to suffer for Jesus Christ, he was able to encourage other early Christians to suffer for Christ. I'll read 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. 
Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that's come, that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Peter not only was able to bear the sufferings of Christ, he encouraged the early Christians to rejoice as they participate in the sufferings of Christ so that they may be overjoyed when the glory of Christ is revealed. So the grace of God in Peter's life was not used to excuse Peter's failure. But the grace of God in the life of Peter was used to strengthen Peter to grow him up. The purpose of God's grace in our lives, justification by faith in Jesus Christ, by grace alone, had a purpose it is the holiness, it is to conform to the image of Jesus Christ, who suffer. Romans chapter 8, verse 29, I will read this verse. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God had a purpose of our calling, purpose of our salvation, that is the sanctification, justification by faith in Jesus alone, by grace alone, has a purpose, as a foundation for sanctification and for us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And we see the fulfillment in the life of Apostle Peter. Again, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13. But rejoice as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. I know there is a saying that if you cannot avoid something, enjoy it. <laughs> Jesus clearly said, whoever wants to follow me, meaning there is no exception, whoever wants to follow me must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. There is no exceptions in Jesus' words. So participation in the suffering of Christ as believers is a must. If you cannot avoid it, we'd better enjoy it. So Peter advised, rejoice! in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ. This is how God designed. This is the purpose of God for the salvation, justification by faith in God. The holiness to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, to grow in the image of Jesus Christ who suffer, is God's purpose for all believers. This is what it's missing when we say, well, Peter failed, we fail, we live by the grace of God. There is something more. Our failure covered by the grace of God should have become the foundation for us to grow, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. The grace of God has a purpose, goal, that is, holiness of God.
So when we fail, we can remember the word Jesus has spoken to us, such as 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13, or whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it, or whoever wants to follow me must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. We need to remember the word Jesus has spoken to us in the Bible at the time of failure. When he, because Peter remembered the word Jesus has spoken to him, he was protected from committing more terrible mistake. When you think about Judas Iscariot, Peter and Judas Iscariot both betray Jesus. At the time of Jesus' trial, but Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him when he failed. But Judas Iscariot did not remember the word Jesus has spoken to him. Jesus said to Judah, one of you will betray me. One who dips his bread into the same bowl will betray me. One of the 12. Judas Iscariot could remember the word Jesus had spoken to him and protected himself from making more terrible mistake which is committing suicide. Remembering the word of God helps us from making, help us not to make more terrible failure or mistake after we fail or make mistakes. One day, I made a terrible mistake, and I failed miserably. And then I remembered the key verse of that day's daily bread. That was, always pray and not give up. My failure was so miserable, I wanted to give up. I was tempted to give up for three or four days. Temptation kept coming to me. Why don't you give up? But I remembered, I should say, God gave the words in the morning before I made a mistake. God help me to remember the word Jesus has spoken to me in the Bible. Always pray and not give up. So three or four days, I remember the word Jesus has spoken to me and had to fight, not give up. If I had given up, my miserable mistake of that day will be a piece of cake compared to the, my failure that I would make after I gave it up. Remembering the word of God, Jesus has spoken to us in the Bible. The Holy Spirit spoke all the words in the Bible. Protect us from worst kind of failure and mistake, even when we made failure or mistakes. There are two famous failures, one in Old Testament, one in New Testament. 
Most fa famous failure in Old Testament is King David's failure. He slept with Bathsheba and he murdered General Uriah, Bathsheba's husband. Arguably, the most prime example of failure in the New Testament is Peter's failure in today's passage. But Peter did not give up. Peter did not make even worse mistake or failure. He remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. He remembered Jesus had already knew he would make a mistake and encouraged him to prepare for his spiritual battles, a temptation. God also wants us to grow from failure. God does not want us to use the grace of God as an excuse of our continued failures. The purpose, of great, the purpose of the grace of God given in our lives is for us to grow, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, to rejoice in as much as we participate in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. So, I made a decision. I have decided today I will rejoice in as much as I participate in the sufferings of Christ. I truly believe if you cannot avoid it, better to enjoy it. I decide to rejoice as I participate in the sufferings of Christ. I don't know how long it will take but I have determined to do so. Today, we learned how we have to see our spiritual failures from Peter's failure. We should not interpret Peter's failure. Peter failed, we, fall, we, all, we all fail we live by the grace of God. There is some truth in it, but that's not the sound teaching or whole truth. The grace of God has a purpose and a goal that is the holiness, that is to conform to the image of Jesus Christ, especially suffering of Christ. So our failure and the grace of God should be our foundation for us to grow, to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And how much Peter would grow from his failure? We'll see more in detail as we study First and Second Peter after the book of Mark. One word, Peter remembered the word. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Thank you for blessing us to come and have a worship service together. May you bless us to grow from our failures instead of justifying our failures in the name of your grace. Thank you for teaching us your grace as a purpose to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Please help us to rejoice as you participate in the sufferings of Christ. I thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for a powerful message to help us to know how to overcome failures uh, through God's help. Uh, the, we're going to sing now hymn uh, 581.
And now we'll have the closing announcements and prayer topics from Pastor John.